Okay, how do you handle redundant information uh, usually? Um, suppose um, I have uh, many, many measurements for the theta. Okay, so if I have a redundant measurement, of course, those uh, each measurement will have an error, right? So first, uh, uh, those uh, many measurements has an error. How can I um, estimate best or the optimal value? Since I don't know the true value, maybe and an error is supposed to be maybe in a random manner, random manner. Then if I could do the average, I might get a you know nice like less noisy uh, theta values. That's the typical concept, right? So you have a many measurement, you usually find the average value. So this is for the simple example for single value, but usually we find this in a least square manner. Like um, suppose you have a, you could formulate those redundant measurement of the theta um, as a measurement and your true value is going to be um, added by some a certain error. And if you calculate this, um, Average value using the least square manner that actually the value that could minimize the error. So to formulate them, you have um, a theta double dot equals to b and uh, multiply by a transpose on left and right hand side and it takes an inverse of them. So you have theta double dot sort of optimal to b as um, this pseudo inverse multiply by your b, the measurement. Okay. And that's the value that can minimize the epsilon. So in MATLAB, simply you can just um, formula, uh, identify A and B and just do the backslash. Okay, coming back to our um, inverse dynamics issue. Okay, suppose that we have measured the theta from the um, optical marker system and we have additional measurement force um, from the uh, force plate. And I want to uh, use those additional information to estimate the better theta double dot. Okay, so how so your measurement theta is actually you know includes some error. Your measurement of the force includes some error. How can I use those additional measurement f to best estimate the theta double dot? Since this one is a formulation of the theta, this is a force. It looks like two very different measurement. However. Does this force has anything to do with the theta double dot? Mm, yes, because of the equations of motion, you, even though you measure the force, that includes the information about the theta double dot. That's what we are going to um, uh, formulate now. Okay, so from Newton's law, f equals ma, and those acceleration, like is actually the function of theta in this rigid body rotation motion, right? So if I formulate them, for many, many segments, this is going to be um, maybe capital C matrix and maybe capital M matrix and capital M matrix multiplied by the acceleration. And since your acceleration for the rigid body is a function of rotational uh, value, theta, theta dot, and theta double dot, I can formulate it as something like a theta. Okay, so your uh, if I multiply the C inverse, your formulation of the force, including ground reaction force, so is going to be what? Function of theta. Okay, so from uh, equations of motion, even though you measure the forces, you can actually formulate those measurement in terms of theta double dot. That's what I'm going to explain. So your force informations are actually a function of theta double dot. Okay, I can rearrange the equation a little bit further. So since what I'm interested in is how I can estimate theta double dot, which is, is usually very, very noisy, uh, using those additional information, I can rearrange them in terms of theta double dot and the rest of them, okay? And also make this uh, a coefficient of theta double dot is one, so I can just multiply this one left and right. So your uh, my uh, rewritten Force informations are going to be like theta double dot in terms of uh, some matrices about the gravity and theta and theta dot, the angular velocity term and the measurement forces and the error. Okay, so even though I measure the kinematics and kinetics separately, those are actually interpreted as a two redundant me uh, measurements about the kinematics theta. So you can just choose a similar manner for the averaging in a risk square manner. So I have a two uh, redundant measurement for the theta double dot uh, in term, expressed in terms of B.
Okay, so to find out best um, estimate for the theta optimal value, you can do the pseudo inverse. Okay, so that's by doing so, we can actually use both infor uh, measurement information, theta and the force, to estimate um, sort of optimal theta double dot values. Okay, so since your theta double dot value is ho hopefully supposed to be supposedly better than your just second derivative of kinematics measurement, you can actually plug that in to your inverse dynamics inward iteration to figure that out what's going to be the forces and the torques. And sometimes you may trust some uh, measurement value other than the other. So instead of having just one identical um, matrix here, maybe you can put the weight function um, in, front of, in front of them. So depending on your uh, measurement condition, you can actually tune your relative weight between those measurements. The key concept here is you can use um, uh, you can you use utilize all those measurement value. Okay, to figure that out, what's going to be the optimal theta value. Okay, let's work on uh, the simple example, how we can use those least square method to estimate the joint torques here. So suppose that these are the equations of motion. And suppose that I have measured the theta and the joint forces. Okay, so I have those measurement theta, m, in uh, Rx measurement, Ri measurement. Okay, since it seems like I have a two different measurement, kinematics and kinetics, but since these forces are uh, inferring some theta double dot values from the equations of motion, I can formulate them in terms of theta double dot. So from here, I can uh, formulate this as a theta double dot as Rx, Ry measurement, and all the other parameters from the uh, equations of motion by having a it's a matrix such as AX plus AX equals to B kind of formulation, I can find out optimal theta double dot by a pseudo inverse, just simply A backslash B in MATLAB. Okay, so by calculating theta optimal value, I can use plug that in to the original equations of motion, uh, in calculating, uh, estimating inverse dynamics of the joint torque. Um, there could be other options possible when I'm formulating the redundant equations about theta double dot like this. Okay, so the only difference is here I have a identical one number one uh, in the uh, establishing a matrix. Here I have some parameters. Uh, think about how those are different from the other, and are you supposed to have the same results or different? Okay, let's summarize that there are different um, different um, inverse dynamics. Inverse dynamics is basically uh, from the measured kinematics, you can figure that out what's going to be the joint forces and torques that could that generates the most motion. So whatever noted as a green color means the measurement. So inward iteration means you have at least minimum joint kinematics information that will to estimate what's going to be the forces and torques from the equations of motion. Uh, the drawback the um, is uh, maybe those estimated torques and force could be noisy because your second derivative of your measurement is noisy. Assume that you have additional measurement for the ground reaction force and torques from the um, force plate. Maybe you can use those value to um, bypass your um, noisy acceleration for the when you're calculating the first segment but that's only applied for the first segment only because your second segment you sh should still uh, pretty much rely on your uh, der second derivative of the acceleration data also another drawback is that your final um, the segments in equations are redundant because you have a additional uh, measurement information. So you uh, you have a sort of redundant information uh, wasted. Okay, so either you can ignore it or you can just use it for the measure for the um, accuracy, the measurement accuracy. But basically, those uh, redundant uh, equations are wasted. So to uh, resolve those issue. Uh, um, the uh, least square iteration has been suggested. So since uh, among those redundant measurement methods, you can use it as a least square manner to uh, find out sort of optimal, okay, the better theta double dot 
uh, estimation, okay, uh, hopefully less, a uh, little bit less noisy, and then use those information like a theta and theta dot measured value and estimated theta double dot value uh, for the inward iteration of inverse dynamics to calculate the joint torques and joint forces. Uh, one last thing I would like to talk about uh, in, uh, mentioning inverse dynamics is uh, sometimes if we are so into mechanical analysis of human motion, sometimes we sort of lost uh, its physiological uh, meaning. Okay, so for example, I have an upper body and lower body as a rigid body um, uh, modeling, and suppose I could calculate successfully calculated joint torques at the hip joint, like pelvic joint, uh, using the inverse dynamics. What that means? Does that mean you're um, uh, lower limb bone or muscles are generating that exact forces. Well, what really happens in anatomical uh, way is you have a two joints in contact. There is a bone to bone uh, reaction forces and also there are muscle and tendon forces applied on the joints, right? So if you make a model, you have many, many contact points other than the bone. So you have a um, actual like a reaction force from the next bone, next joints, and you also have a uh, muscle forces and the tendon forces applied. So what you can get from the inverse dynamics is a net force of all the forces applied on that joint okay so note that your f net calculating from the inverse dynamics is including all those you know muscle forces tendon forces and the reaction forces applied on that uh, bone okay on that joint on that segment and also friction force from the tissues or the other um, body segments could be also applied on it and that you cannot separate them out OK, so we should note that those mechanical analysis for the uh, joint force and joint torques are just net force and nothing to do with. Well, it's not could not be directly interpreted as a muscle force or the joint actual joint reaction force. Thank you for listening.